Erev Tov Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're listening to Israeli News Live, and uh, this evening, uh, myself and Yana are, is here with me the, uh, as we are going to really be looking into a lot of information that uh, uh, Yana has been working on. I think it does complement uh, the biblical aspect of the beast system and how the dragon gives that beast, its, uh, you know, the beast system its power, the rise of the beast, you might say. Uh, and at the same time, let me just clarify one thing I think is very important uh, because some people, they say, wow, you know, you bring these things out. You and Yonder, you bring out so much truth. You're exposing the Noahide laws. You're, you're exposing what is happening in the world today. Uh, amongst the elitist uh, that includes a lot of Orthodox Jews as well. And it sounds anti-Semitic. Well, it's not anti-Semitic. And we certainly realize there are a lot of Jewish people that are, are they're not part of this. They would not desire to be a part of this. They may be Orthodox. They may be uh, secular or Reformed Jews or uh, Karaite Jews. Uh, but so the, the point is, is to inform the people and to get Christians to recognize what's going on because it is a new world order. And this is the direction the new world order is going into. So anyway, Yana, what's your thoughts on these things? Yes, it's definitely not all Jews. We shouldn't hate Jews as a race or people. And in fact, we should believe in freedom of religion. We want our own way of uh, serving God. We don't want to be uh, prohibited to, to worship God our own way. So I don't believe that we should, uh, you know, prohibit somebody from worshiping God the way they feel like they want to worship God. It's just a part of constitution in the United States, the freedom of religion. So we want to definitely say that we believe in a freedom of religion, but at the same time, this is very important, Steve, what, what we are about to expose here, because what happened with this executive order that Mr. Trump signed, it's not just anything. And what people might not realize that it is the Jewish people, and I'm going to say it, it's going to sound very harsh, but I'm going to say it. President Trump has signed Godhood of Jewish people. He has declared with this executive order that Jews are gods in flesh. Why do I say that? Because it is in their writings, it is in their religious writings that they consider Torah, okay, that Jews are gods in flesh, that they are divine, they are separate from the goyim or the nations or the Gentiles, and that they deserve to uh, run the world or run the nations and be so-called light unto the world. And it is in their uh, sacred writings, more specifically in a Chabad sacred writing, uh, the book called Tanya, Tanya yes. which they consider Torah or revelation, deeper revelation of the Torah. They consider it divine book. And in that book, it says that Jews are gods in flesh, that they are divine race of people, and they are not a religion. It says Judaism is not a religion, but Judaism is a nationality. That's exactly what you're going to hear today from the Chabad rabbi explaining just that when he studies Tanya with the fellow Jews. And if you understand what Trump just signed, you will understand that what he has signed is what Jews, the Chabad Jews, wanted him to sign and put into American law. And we already know we have seven Noahide laws in our public education uh, law. It's a public law, 102.14. Okay, it is a law, even though people say it's a ceremonial law and uh, you know, it's not serious. To Jews, it's very serious, obviously, because in their holy writings, as we will talk about this tonight as well, it, it, there is a prophecy. There is There are prophecies in Zohar and in Jewish writings, and they're going to bring their, their system or their world peace or their new world order. They're going to bring it through education system. 
So for this law to be in education system is very important for, for the Jews. And we will listen to this tonight so we can see, hear it out of the Jewish mouth. And in the beginning, Stephen, you said it's not all Jews and it's definitely not all Jews. There is only no. a certain elitist Jews, more specifically Chabad Jews and Orthodox rabbis that um, are a continuation of the Pharisees. Pharisees was a so-called temple cult during the time of Jesus. It was a separate group that separated themselves. In fact, the word Pharisee means separated one. So they separated themselves and created their oral traditions and they were in a direct opposition to Jesus and they were leading Jewish people, the simple Jewish people, astray from original faith. Okay. Right. right. So the, today's Pharisees or these Orthodox rabbis and more specifically Chabad rabbis, which Chabad is actually a um, criminal Jewish organization involved in many criminal acts such as organ trafficking, pedophilia, uh, drug trafficking, you name it. And, and we have to say these are alleged things that they're involved in, but the evidence is out there that would clearly show this. And, and you know, one thing Yana, I think that's interesting to point out is that what we see that uh, is being perpetrated by the Chabad organization in this global domination right now is no different than what Adolf Hitler was doing. And that's the strange thing. Why our Christian brothers and sisters are not waking up and recognizing this. And, and, and the sad thing is, and this is why I say we try to do everything we can to get people to realize this is not inclusive of all Judaism and all people that are Jewish uh, be, because of this. But that's what happened with the German people. The German people became, became so hated because of the crimes of Adolf Hitler and this group that he had. But it was because they, they rallied around Adolf Hitler. I mean, the nation really did rally around him. And it was a very small remnant of Germans that did not, right. uh, that were not part of it. And uh, we're seeing today the evangelical, the messianic uh, Christians and even some of the Hebrew Roots movement as well that are rallying around Trump, rallying around the Orthodox Jewish movement, and they have no idea they're fueling this new world order. So whenever you're ready, let's get started and uh, we can play this first video for people. Yeah, well, in the first video, what's important is that this is actually on somebody else's channel. It's uh, Brian, uh, Brian Hefner. He took this from Arut Sheva just the other day, but that was in the United Nations where uh, Jewish people are saying, or rabbi, not people, I, I hate to say that. Let, let's specif specify, it's Chabad rabbis who are speaking in United Nations. And these Chabad rabbis are declaring war on anti-Semites, supposedly anti-Semitism, what they call anti-Semitism is rampant right now, and they call it, oh, they declared a war on us, let us declare a war on them, and let us be the light to the nations, to them. So let's hear what they have to say. All right, let's play it. It is clear that anti-Semites have declared war on the Jewish people. It is time for us to declare war on them. Today, we're going to stand in this house of the United Nations, and we're going to be a light, not just a light unto the nations, but a light unto the world, so the world can see and know that anti-Semitism is not just a Jewish issue, but it's a world issue, and beginning today, we're going to take whatever we can to eradicate it. So, as you heard, Steve, they're going to take everything to they can, any measure they can to eradicate anti-Semitism. What do they mean? What measure? Well, a few days later, we hear uh, Trump signing these executive orders. So, they're putting things into our laws, the United, Na United States laws, which basically says that Judaism is not a race, but uh, not a uh, Judaism as a race or nationality, not just a religion, meaning Judaism is not a religion, but it is actually a race or nationality. 
But let me just kind of, uh, for those that, that may have not have known who this was in this video back here, this was Rabbi Goldstein that was uh, in the uh, the Poway shooting uh, that, uh, you know, where there were several people killed uh, that has become a very outspoken uh, critic for anti-Semitism and, of course, moving this along. And it was uh, the foreign minister, Dannon, uh, that was speaking there with him, uh, the Israeli foreign minister uh, for the United States, uh, that was that they were speaking there together. And what when Yana is talking about that they're that they are working uh, to for this global order here, taking this to the United Nations when when you see that uh, Rabbi Goldstein who was speaking there when he actually spoke after this uh, clip that we saw there when he spoke at the United Nations he brings up Rabbi Menachem Schneerson who is the uh, supposed they call him the the Rebbe or they also believe him to be the Messiah uh, of the Chabad organization. And he quotes him from the United Nations saying that they wanted to uh, basically get rid of the 70 nations. They don't need 70 nations, but they wanted to bring about a Noahide law. Uh, and he really pushed the Noahide laws. He called them the, um, I forget how they state that yeah, moral you know, code yeah, moral Un code. universal yes. moral code for universal peace exactly yes. and and so it's not you know i mean what trump did when he signs this executive order so many people don't realize this was not an executive order that just said okay don't hate jews on college campuses this was silencing every single debate that that the young people have at these universities, and it's just the first step. But like, for example, uh, you can't say that the Rothschilds now at a, co at a college campus uh, created the state of Israel. You cannot say it would be illegal for them to say that uh, uh, the sinking or, or the attack on the USS Liberty uh, was a war crime or right. to even blame Israel for it or any of these things here. So it's or 9 11 nice. or exactly 9 11, exactly another inside job uh, orchestrated by the Mossad and CIA CIA in order to bring the United States into the conflict in the Middle East. It, it's a mess, right? A and soon mess. we will understand why it was so important to these Chabad Jews to declare Judaism a nation and not a religion. I didn't know at the time, Steve, a few days ago until I listened to a, a rabbi who is teaching from the book called Tanya, their sacred book called Tanya. Okay, so uh, this particular rabbi, he is Rabbi Kessin. Uh, he has a YouTube channel, Torah Thinking, and when you listen to him, it kind of reveals very interesting information of how Jews think and what is their halakha, what is the way of thinking. And he is saying here, who is Trump? Okay, first of all, he identifies Trump as an Esau, okay, and as a leader of Esau, and as a good part of Esau, who is doing tshuva or repentance, okay, and who is basically working for the Jews. He says Trump works for them, and he was put in this position of a president only for one reason, to help the messianic process and help the Jews in several ways. So let's see what he has to say. We can start at 106, Stephen, right there. 106, 24. Right, let's then. just listen. And you guys, you can see it on your screen so you'll know where to start. It will be like pretty long. So okay. let's go. Sit back and listen. To his original task, which is to support Yaakov to do the Tikkun. As I once mentioned in the Medrash, in the beginning he was Yavoid, the Rav Yavoid Soir, and the older will serve the younger. Then he became Rav Yavoid Soir, he will persecute the younger, and now he's returning to Yavoid. So Trump, we see it, which is incredible. Trump is the greatest friend Israel has ever had, which is really unbelievable that that's what he's doing. Why? Because he is the Toif Shebeisov. He's a messianic figure, and his job is four things. One is to assist the Jewish people to get Israel back. Even though people hate that, what does Israel back mean? Jerusalem is the capital, unheard of, right? Embassy moves to Jerusalem. 
the Golan now begins to become Jerusalem. And not only that, they're already saying they want the Jordan Valley as part of Israel. Slowly do you notice what's happening? That Israel is coming back to the Jews. The territory of Israel is coming back to the Jews. And there's nobody that could stop it. That's his job. The second job of Trump is to protect the Jewish people from the UN, from Europe, right? From all the anti-Semites, people that hate Israel. I mean, imagine Trump came out when, uh, I think it was Omar said, you know, uh, you know, uh, not, not Omar, but the when the Democratic is becoming uh, anti-Semitic, so Trump said, how can you even vote for the Democratic Party? You're Jewish, right? And uh, excuse me, what do you care about Jews and so on? Because that's his job. That's his job as a messianic figure, right? That a president should say to Jews, don't vote for the Democrats, the anti Semitic, you know, what, what are you, you? You've now become the shield for anti Semitism for the Jews? Yes, because that's who he is, you see. So, therefore, in a certain sense, he will become an incredible protector of the Jews. I mean, just imagine what he did to the UN and what's her name again? Um, Yes, Steve, so far, do you want to comment? I mean, we can keep going, but... So. I, I, I'm about ready to come off my rocker. 107.45 is when he really starts getting into this. And when, when he's sitting there saying that, uh, you know, that, that, that Trump is the protector and that... Um, Steve, he, he's so Trump doesn't work for United States people, obviously. No. I mean, when, you, you listen, when when he signed the executive order, and we watched the video, I wish we had the video right now to play it for the people that they could see it again, just as a reminder. Uh, but as Trump walks in to the room, Mike Pence is left out, the vice president of the United States. Who leads the procession? It is Jared Kushner and Ivanka Kushner, his daughter yeah. and his son-in-law. And they're Democrats. Chab yeah, Democrats. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and they're Chabad Jews. And Chabad so Jews. when people are saying, oh, the Democrats are this and Democrats are that, well, that's Trump's son-in-law and daughter uh, there that you're talking about. And they are leading the they're leading the president into the room. Well, being at his right hand, too, shows that they are the right hand of power. Yes. And he calls them honorable. And also, remember, this rabbi here, Kessin, is a Chabad Jew. So his theology is same as of, uh, that of Jared Kushner. So he's telling you that... Trump was put in a position to protect the Jew Jewish people, to give Jews all the Israel, right? Pass the laws right? as well. So how, how does he protect the Jewish people from anti-Semitism, from Europe, from uh, all the anti-Semites, from United Nations and so on? So uh, th he's saying that Trump works for the Jewish people. He doesn't work for American people. Now let's I'll keep listening, Steve, what else he says. Okay. Nikki Haley, it's unbelievable what she did, and so on. Now, she'll be back. Don't worry about it, you know. Uh, but it was just absolutely incredible. So that's his second job. This is all messianic. It's unheard of because he's a Tev Shabbat You see, the third job of Trump, I believe, is to raise America to return the morality. Okay, wait a minute. Did you hear what he said yeah, about Nikki Haley? She'll be back? Don't worry about it. She's going to be back. Whatever that means, Steve. Whoa. It's almost like they know. Well, everything what is, this person is going to be president, that one or whatever, you know, it's, it's always pre-planned. They know who's going to be in power. And so, uh, and then, and by the way, this is not just limited to um, the United States. People mix, mix that up. Russia does the same thing. India is doing the same thing. Chabad's got all the power. Right. So. ...of America. That's his third job. Because the Bosham does not want America, right, to be corrupt. That's why he's always saving America. America doesn't realize that. Because America is fundamentally the Tev Shebeisov, right? And that's why he brought them the Civil War in 1860. Why? Because they were all Chayav Misa. They were all obligated to die. Why? Because they kidnapped people. That's Misa. You can't kidnap people with slavery, the blacks from Africa. They kidnapped them. And that doesn't, that's not what the terrorist says. If a person wants to sell himself into slavery, right? Actually, it's not slavery. It's really called servitude because he owes money. Fine. But you can't. Now, he's talking here how America was guilty of slavery, which actually, Steve, I have done some research on this further. And it was proven it was actually uh, 
Rothschilds, the Jews, right, that were、uh, head of the slavery, the slave market, the slave market. They ran the slave market and made it look like、uh, the white Americans are. Uh, running it, but in the shadows behind all the profits and everything,、uh, there was actually Jews who ran the entire process. So it's funny that he is、uh, blaming America for it. But we,、uh, yeah, you know, let's let's go to he he keeps speaking of four jobs that、uh, tr- that Trump was picked to do for the Jews. So that's interesting, and I know it's kind of long, but. At one thirteen, he's going to say specifically. Do you want to hear all the jobs? Uh, uh, he's at the number three job for Trump. He's going to speak let's about. Go, let's go ahead and do all all, all of、right. them. Right. Okay. Let's listen. Can't kidnap somebody to do that. This whole comparison is nonsense. You see. So America, really, in a certain say, will have Misa. You know, you've kidnapped millions of blacks. So what the bunch of do? It's okay. I will make sure that a lot of you will die. Bingo. Civil war. So that was a kapara for the kidnapping that they did for who knows how many years, and just destroyed the whole kidnapping process. That's what the civil war did. It stopped the kidnapping process. You see, and the Bush was always behind America in World War II, in all the wars and so on. You know, where the Bush wants to help America. You see, and he and and how is Trump helping America? Because Trump is doing something that Obama didn't do, which is astounding. He has replaced 140 judges, you know, that Obama never did. Can you imagine 140 positions which were opened in the federal courts, and he's replaced them with conservative judges. And conservatives are moral. You see, that's unheard of. He's doing that silently. So not only is he replacing the judges on the Supreme Court, you see, which is very important for morality and for religious freedom and values, he's doing that on the federal courts, and everybody, nobody's watching. In fact, Trump even said, "I want to thank Obama." Right, I want to thank him, you know. And he said, and he said himself, I can't even begin to understand why the guy did this, why the guy never replaced the judges, because in the end, the morality comes from the courts, the freedom of religion, right, and the the laws and so on about morality is really judicial, and he has now replaced 140 federal judges. It's unbelievable, you see. Incredible. So that's his second,、uh, his third job, because the Bush wants America to become moral again. You see, and that's why he's, God is always concerned about the, the the health, so to speak, of America. In any case, and then the fourth job of Trump is to make America great. Why? Because the the greater America, it's not America that becomes great. It's the Tov Shabbat Esav that becomes great. And the greater the Tov Shabbat Esav becomes, the, the good part of Esav, the greater will be its influence over Israel, because everybody's going to run to be a friend of Israel because America loves Israel.、Uh, you see, that's why America has to become great in order for Israel to become, Israel to become great, and that's the deal. You want to help my Jews? God makes sure. You want to help my Jews, right? You will always rise to the top, and that's why America is rising to the top. Because they want to help Israel and allow Israel to expand and to become an incredibly great nation, and Israel is doing it. Do you know Israel is the 11th greatest industrial nation based on the UN statistic? You believe this? A nation of nine million people beat is beat uh, the the、uh, the Taliban. There's 15 million Taliban. I'm sure they must be very jealous. How can a nation of nine million nine million people rise the level of a world nation? It's impossible. Of course, that's messianic. You have to be blind. You have to be blind not to see this. Any case, this is what's happening. That's the job of Trump, which he's doing. You see, and what's going to happen? It's fascinating. The next election, we'll see. I think the people in America will be so angry, even the non-Trumpers, at what the Democrats have done. That Trump will win again by a landslide. Not only that, he will get both houses, and then you would, you're going to watch what's called Trump Unleashed, <laughs> Unchained, because once he has both houses, 
right? And he won the second term, then get out of my way, because then his power is almost unlimited, you know? And he's not a lame duck, on the contrary. He's a revived Trump, because all the Kitrugim, the Sutton, that's over. Because the Sutton only has permission for the first term. After that, forget it. Then Trump can do what he's assigned to do, which is to assist the Jewish people. Why can't they, why, why can't they just That's what I believe. What? Reason for wow, Steve. So Trump unleashed. Please comment. Trump unleashed. He will have unlimited power. Uh, power. And uh, he, he will have do... both houses. He can yes. do not anything, not just the fact that he says he can do anything he wants to, but it's going to be completely in favor of the beast system itself. Right. He specifically said these words that Trump can do what he is designed to do, which is to assist the Jewish people. And now what did he sign? They had Jewish people are a nation. You see, that was a very important step. Well, you know, I'd have to say this is also one thing that uh, Chuck Baldwin said when he was on with you the other day. Uh, Chuck said that the education system was actually a strategic move because the older people, uh, middle-aged and up, are already strong supporters of Israel. Uh, so they have that. We can see that with the polls. We can see the evangelical movement and everything behind them. But as Chuck pointed out, in the education, the younger people coming up, they don't hold the same values that a lot of the Christians actually have had. Right. So Chuck pointed out that it, it was it was a strategic move on uh, the president's part, which actually being influenced by the Israeli lobby to put these in uh, education. But not just that. We know it's from the Jewish lobby because, uh, as you've pointed out before, there are there uh, a court right out of the mouths or actually, I think, out of the book of Tanya is that uh, they to control everything. They're using the evangelicals. They're using education. And it was one other um uh, they're using Freemasonry. Freemasonry. Okay, those mm -hmm. three they would use to gain control. We will show this at the okay, end. Okay, okay. Uh, All right, I'm but... jumping ahead. I just, I knew it was in my mind and I wanted to share that though. No, that's okay. But this is incredible because uh, as American citizens, let's not even talk as Christians or believers in Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Let's just talk as American citizens. What do you call this, Steve, when... This person here tells you that job of Trump is to assist the Jews, make America great again only for one reason and one reason only, to make Israel great. Well, you know, I, here's the here's the thing. He appointed 140 judges that are far right, which you already talked about. These judges are daily right. briefed in Talmudic law. Okay, so and and he says that the that's because he has to make America moral nation again. We know that in the eyes of Noahide. Chabad Jews, it's Noahide laws, and they already have it in education law here in, in the United States. So when they speak of morality, you know they speak of seven Noahide laws. They're not even speaking of the Ten Commandments. Okay, they're speaking of seven Noahide laws. Yes. And he's proud of the 140 judges. So I wonder what what are they preparing? Well, the thing is, like you like you pointed out, what what is this? What's the really? We should say what is wrong with what's going on? It's not putting the American people first. We are actually showing favoritism of another nation, which tells you that uh, the state of Israel uh, is something far greater in the mind of the president. Uh, than, than, United than States. caring for the people of the United States first. Uh, you know, I, I mean, we have a lot of issues there because we yeah. know the Rothschilds brought this state together. That's the first issue to begin with. But the point is, is it, it, it obviously tells you this is a definitely a globalist agenda. Yes. Yeah, so basically, Trump works for another nation, which he already declared in executive order that Judaism is that nation. Jews are that nation he works for. Yes. Okay. And that's who he makes America great for, for them. So basically now they're saying he's going to maybe win by a landslide landslide. And he, and he no doubt will, because as uh, I think it was the same rabbi here that made the comment that the impeachment, proceedings is what helps put him over the edge. Otherwise, he would have been a 50-50 uh, right. chance of winning.
So this is very serious in, in my eyes, even as an American citizen, because we want president faithful to its nation, to our nation, to people of America, not some other different foreign nation within a nation. That's right. Isn't it interesting to Yana that when we look at what's going on, even in the Democrat side of this, you can tell that uh, the Israeli lobby has control of both sides. Yes. Because they have made sure they have chosen the candidates to have no possibility of defeating Trump in the first place. There, there, there could be some people there on the Democrat side that would actually give him a real challenge, but they intentionally put candidates up there that are very weak, have no ability to, to defeat the president of the United States right now. And then on top of that, uh, you know, dig up every kind of dirt they can. And well, did Democrats up, you know, come against his executive order? No. No. Right? So we know that both sides work for the same same the, goal. That should be the biggest thing for the people right there. Exactly. Why didn't they say anything? It's a show. It's a game. And we shouldn't play that game as Christians. I believe we shouldn't play that game. We should look at it from outside, you know, and see it as a bird with two wings. Well, it's like former Congress, uh, former Congresswoman Cynthia McKinney said to me, uh, they're both sides, Democrat and Republican, are controlled by the Israeli lobby. Right. And I know that some would say, well, that's anti-Semitic to say it, but it's the truth. Right. So it's, it's not anti-Semitic. It's just true. Yeah, but now it's illegal to speak truth. Exactly. And they have declared a war on us, as and we saw they, in the first if video. If they did an executive order to silence those in universities, how much longer, when Trump is unleashed, as he just said, Trump how unleashed. much longer is it going to be before uh, what we're saying now, They'll next they'll move to the internet, you can't speak there. And next it will be criminalized, that you will have exactly. to go to jail because you touched a godly divine nation, you know, Who was the chosen the nation. So this is a problem. I see it as a problem. Who told us recently, or somebody, or maybe you made the statement to me about Noah Hyde, and they said, uh, that's really, you know, just think about what it says. Noah, go hide. Basically, Noah, hide. You know? yeah. So the descendants of Noah right now, you need the to Gentiles, hide. you better go hide. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but let's go to our next slide, Steve. I don't okay. remember exactly where um We don't have we are, too many but... more to go, actually. Uh Oh, uh, this is another Rabbi Friedman. He's a Chabad rabbi. And I just want him to say it out of his own mouth. Remember when I we spoke to people on conferences, we said when, when a Jew speaks of Torah. Right, okay, right. And, and Christian just the hears the word right. Torah. Christian person thinks, oh, five books of Moses, Old Testament, right? Yeah. So yeah, some people go so far as to say it's the Old Testament. Right. Uh, right. And when, when Jews defend the Torah and says Torah says and Torah says, then Christians think, oh, they are just, you know, talking about the Old Testament. They're partly blinded for our sake and they will one day all believe all Israel will be saved. And this is the common thinking. And people in general, and I think now after like year of education, we have given a lot of people, they start to understand what the word Torah means for the Jew. But it's not just Tanakh. In fact, Tanakh is the Old Testament. Uh, it has a secondary role. But here, Friedman, Rabbi Friedman will tell you what Torah means for the Jew. And he said it five days ago, or at least it was uploaded five days ago, and even the title of the video, right. Why You Should Study Hasidic Philosophy. Oh, and, my goodness. Yeah. So he's even telling you should study it. And then we got people like Shapira saying that you, they should be under the Orthodox Jews. Anyway. Oh, my goodness. Let's, let's catch it. Let's listen into it. Hasidus is the Torah. Because when we say when we say the Torah, we're not just talking about five books of Moses. We're talking about all the written books of Torah and all the oral works of Torah, including Kabbalah, including Hasidus. So these are all dimensions or layers of Torah that were given at Mount Sinai. But it, it unfolds gradually over history as needed. 
So when we need a deeper, stronger connection to God because of the suffering and the, and the time lapse since the giving of the Torah, another dimension of Torah becomes available. So there was a time when studying Kabbalah was forbidden, then all of a sudden it had to be made available. We needed a new injection of inspiration. The, the most recent, the latest dimension of Torah is Hasidus, teachings of Hasidus. Teaching of Hasidus is the book of Tanya, the Chabad Jews are studying. Right. But again, so what, what is Torah when, uh, in the mind of a Jewish rabbi or Jewish people? It uh, is the oral, oral law, law as Kabbalah, said, Kabbalah, Tanya or Hasidus, right? You know, this this may explain why some of uh, the I don't know if we want to classify them Hebrew roots or or, or 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 I should say different groups that are similar to that that are trying to go back and really uh, encompass embrace, the, embrace the yeah, law the itself. Law they then, are going this deep into it. That's why we see the elements of Kabbalah and Kabbalistic ways and and oral law and Talmud and things like that. And they're they teaching, into the church. yeah, and they're uh, in Talmud, right? Oral law is Talmud, basically. Right. Uh, uh, Mishnah and Gemara. Mishnah, the Midrash, Gemara. everything. Yeah, exactly. So the writings of the sages, and now they take the, their traditions and they're teaching them as truth to Christians. And do you know that, Yana You just that, dealt with that. Now, yes. Kizadek being Shem, that's, that's Jewish Talmudic, Teaching. Yes, yes. Okay. And, and that almost caught me off on guard on that one. But because you know, this here's, here's yeah. what's funny. Paul is really given, they give him H E double, you know what, over the fact that he says that, uh, uh, you know, he, he talks about there being a new covenant. We read the book of Hebrews and, and the Messiah was after the order of Melchizedek, which would be a new covenant, not after the order of Aaron, the Levitical law. So not even, not even talking about Talmudic law, but even Levitical law. All right. Now, oddly enough, in the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Qumranite community, who were very faithful law keepers as well, not, they did not, they were not Torah keep, I mean, excuse me, uh, they weren't, uh, Talmudist, but they were law like, keepers. Yes, like they specifically in the Hebraic language said that the Messiah brings a Barit Chadesha, that is a new, new covenant, covenant, and it would be a Melchizedek covenant. That, that's amazing. And he did. And he did. Let's go to another slide, Steve. All right. Yeah, we're getting, because right. we have getting close to the end here now. Oh, well, here we're going to spend some time. Okay. Yeah, we got several right. clips in there. Like video. in the beginning, when I told you that by signing of executive order, President Trump has signed Godhood of Jews. Why do I say that? They see themselves as gods, as a divine race, as different from Goyim. Yes. And... I don't have all of the rabbis tonight, but we are preparing yes. very uh, a compilation, compilation of many, many rabbis. Rabbis and Jewish people who who speak out of their Judaic teachings, how they believe, what they believe about Gentiles. And there you will see it is a very serious teaching that Jews are gods in flesh. They're, yes. they're not only part of God, but they're gods themselves. And that's what Tanya teaches. And Tanya teaches specifically, as you will hear this rabbi speak, that Judaism is not religion, but Judaism is nation. And that's when I heard that, Steve, I knew, I knew that this executive order with this Jared Kushner Chabadju behind Trump, this was pre-planned. This is another level of their interference with uh, American people, right. using of American people, and putting their law, Noahide laws uh, further, furthering Noahide agenda. Okay, so this is um, the name of Rabbi. Let's let's go down. I think uh, now I hold on. Did I? Uh, this is uh, Likutela Marim. Lessons in Tanya by Likutala. Okay. Maybe, maybe, oh no, by Ben Tion Krasniansky. I'm sorry, that's his name. Okay. Ben Tion Krasniansky. Yes. And the whole video is just really 
uh, important to watch and watch uh, care, listen carefully because he's explaining their philosophy, their laws, and, and how they believe that they are literally God in flesh. Let's start in, in, in 1736, and okay. let's just give it a listen. We're a few seconds before that, but listen in. Of all the senses. It's the lowest of all the senses. Mamish, called chush hamishush, the sense of touch. And yet here he says that it's a chalik, the, the divine spark that each and every one of us on the one hand, it's literally a piece of God, means the very core and essence of God, the true essence of God, each and every one of us contains, the Jewish soul is literally a piece of God, the highest level, so to speak, of God, the very essence of God, literally a piece of God. But on the other hand, this essence of God traveled very far and has come into our bodies into the world of touch, into the materialistic world, the world that we grasp with our fingers. Only okay, did you hear this, Steve? No. They're literally peace of God. Every Jewish soul, he specified Jewish soul, and we will see uh, very soon how he uh, separates Goyim soul from the Jewish soul. And you know what's sad? When a believer receives the Holy Spirit, that is when you really become part of our Heavenly Father. He lives in but you and you live in Him. That's right. But it doesn't matter if you're Jew or Gentile. Yeah, but you're not God. You know, you know, you, 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 this flesh, he dwells it, in you. whether you're a Jew or Gentile, don't mean nothing. It's right. the fact that you literally have to get that life of God in you by the Holy Spirit itself. And which what's is interesting, different. because they reject Jesus as God in flesh. They reject him. They said that, that God did not come down in flesh. Yet they teach that they collectively, as a Jewish race, are a piece of God, literally. Let's hear it again. Let's hear it again. Let's go to 17. Go to a 17, little bit back, right? just to hear sure, him to sure. say it with such go passion. Back to about Something Jesus cannot be, but they are. Then, it's literally a piece of God, it means the very core and essence of God, the true essence of God, each and every one of us contains, the Jewish soul is literally a piece of God, the highest level, so to speak, of God, the very essence of God, literally. Highest level of God, peace of God, the Jewish soul is peace of God, the highest level of God. A piece, a piece of, of God. God. But on the other hand, this essence of God traveled very far and has come into our bodies, into the world of touch. So that God came very far into the bodies of Jews. Okay, so they believe that, but they reject Christ. They cannot understand, oh, how can God come down in flesh? But yet they believe that they themselves are... Yeah. Peace of God. This And this is interesting because this is something that Jesus brought up to them. He said, how can you condemn me when I say I'm the son of God when you and your own law said you are God's? Right. It, so it's interesting. It hasn't changed. Let me see what I, I marked a 1930 here. Let me see if... Um, to the right. Okay. Sorry. Let me see. Let, let's see what he said. That something that's greater... The greater something is, the lower it could, it, could, uh, it could elevate the lowest. The higher something is, it can elevate something lower. So what can elevate the world of touch, the materialistic world that we live in, the coarse world that we live in? How can we transform this world and refine and elevate and change this world and this environment that we live in? Only by the power and the strength of the peace of literally a peace of God. Because only the core and essence of God, as embodied in the, in the Jewish soul, has the ability to be able to live in this world and to participate in this world with our feet firmly planted in this earthy world and yet be able to transform this world into a godly place, into a holy place, into a divine place. So that's what Alter Rebbe says. Literally, 
a piece of the divine essence. And now he brings a proof from the scripture, from the Torah, right in the beginning. Okay, so uh, he's explaining here how they are the only ones who can bring godliness to this place here on earth and how they are the only people who can do that, literally. Uh, how does he distinguish it from Goyim? Well, I think at 2540 he will explain. It's brief, but still. Um, and 20, quite a bit more, quite a bit more. Quite a bit more. Yeah, there you go. 25, let's just give it a listen. Right. You're giving a piece of yourself. When you're giving a piece of yourself, you know, you, uh, you run out of air, you run out of energy very quickly. Yeah. So that's true for all humans? No, we're talking about specifically the Jewish soul. This is specifically the Jewish soul. This is what makes us Jewish. We have a Jewish soul that's different from a non-Jewish soul. Okay, did you hear that? Okay, that's specifically Jewish soul. That's what makes us Jewish. That's different from non-Jewish soul. I would like to ask him a question. Yeah. Since you and I both come from that background as well, are you that special soul as well? Well, this is the thing, Steve, that... I, I know I'm being a little silly right now. But well, <laughs> t you know, we spoke today with our uh, sister in Christ. She is Jewish. She's a Sephardic Jew. Uh, she believes in Jesus Christ. And she is watching what's happening. And we have decided, Steve, they have stole identity of the Jewish people. Yes, this par particular cult have stole identity of Jewish people. Jewish people, as originally, you know, the seed of Abraham, this little remnant, tiny godly remnant that believed on a seed, they were supposed to tell the world about the Messiah and tell them how much God loves every human being on this earth and that we are all equal. Remember when apostles were arguing who is greater? Yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, is look at the message of Jesus to begin with. His message as a Jewish person to begin with, you know, uh, was completely different. Uh, you know, I mean, sure, he came to the Jews first, but he did not cast out the Gentiles as a result. And he did not look at them as some kind of a lower soul. It's one shepherd and one flock one flock and everybody is precious and everybody is the same and we all have one god and we are one people and there is no difference god is not a respecter of persons this is what, what well, well let's look at it like this here i right? face it this is the truth of the matter all right. If we look at the, if we believe the story that when noah went on board the ark right God said that he, his wife, his sons, their, his daughter-in-laws, they were all righteous and they were saved. And from these people here, this earth was populated. Right. Okay, so there's no difference. Now, let's see what else. I mean, he keeps rambling about the same thing a long, long time. At 39, 30, he will say something. We are the only people in the world. Hold, hold on, 39, 30. Our relationship to God, it's not that we are a nation of philosophers or a nation of mystics. The Jewish people's relationship to God is like a parent-child relationship. We're called the believers, the children of believers. We inherit our relationship. We are the only people in the world that have a biological connection. We are the biological children of, of the original Jews, of Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, and Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and Leah. Lahav the Lelif of those, the Christians today are not the biological children of the original Christians. Muslims today are not the biological See, I mean, always, always, okay. super Jewish supremacy. But, but see, the thing is, is a lot of this is false in what he's saying in the first place, to say that they're not the biological children. How does he know? 
Right. There are many Christians that are biologically connected to Abraham as well. Even if it's through Ishmael, they're still connected. It doesn't. But well, that, Stephen, that's, the, that doesn't are, matter. Listen, we are listening to Jewish supremacy. They speak of anti-Semitism, yet this is the example of anti-gentilism of of the most supremacist, racist ideas. And President Trump has signed these people as a nation, gave them this uh, recognition as a nation. You understand? Well, he's also going to take and, and further that, uh, bring, helping to bring the, the state of Israel to a platform of a new world order. Right. Now, let's see what he says again. He, he will briefly mention... Um, the goyim and he will call this apple and oranges it's a difference like apple and oranges okay just a second 44 um conversion is it's almost like a, a dna transformation it's 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 like you become part of the family when you're not part of how can you become part of the family an orange is an orange, an apple is an apple a jewish soul is a jewish soul non-jewish soul is a non-jewish soul it's a total transformation with a so do you see that they they he was speaking of that the only way to become part of God or part of them is to do a full conversion into Judaism. Right. And okay. they don't all want that, but there are some that there are some that say it. But now no. at 4440 is the part where he will start explaining how Judaism is not a religion, but it is a nation. And this is what kind of when I listened to it. It kind of awakened me to the fact that this is exactly what Trump has signed. And this is their teaching. So now you see who has worked behind all this executive order. Exactly. 4440. You were already there. Convert becomes, re receives a Jewish soul, becomes fused within the Jewish organism. It's a miraculous divine phenomenon. No human being can accomplish it. It's a purely divine phenomenon. And that's why in Jewish law, a true convert is like a newborn baby. Technically, halakhically, a convert is allowed to marry a sister because there's no connection anymore. It's a new human being, a new person, literally like a new person. So this is a divine, the whole conversion is a divine act. And that's why the only one who can determine how to do it is only Hashem, the creator of heaven and earth. This is a purely divine act. We can't arbitrarily decide. It doesn't matter if you're an Orthodox person, a Reformed person. Being Jewish is not religion. The point he's making here is that being Jewish is much deeper than religion. Religion can change. Mother Teresa can turn into an atheist. It has happened to greater people than her. Something earth-shattering happens in your life and you lose your faith. You disengage from your faith. You lose your faith. It has happened. But a Jew will always remain a Jew. A Jew is a Jew is a Jew. Because it's deeper than religion. It's like a parent-child relationship. You can never divorce your parents. You can never change it. It's your essence. It's biological. It's who you are. He's explaining it. And, and he the analogy to 50. Is, is of a parent-child relationship, which is a very, very beautiful analogy because this is what the Torah is telling us. It's just like a child. You can have a beer to the floor and pay us to the floor. You won't become one iota more Jewish. You can learn to appreciate it more, you can learn to express it more, but you won't become one or more Jewish. Another Jew is just as Jewish as you are. And if you truly understand this chapter in the Tanya, you truly understand the basics, the essence of the whole Hasidic philosophy, the essence of the love of one Jew for another Jew, the essence of the respect of one Jew for another Jew, how there cannot be any condescension or any looking down or any sense of superiority, um, you know, one Jew to, towards another Jew. That every Jew is Jewish, because if one Jew looks down at another Jew, if a Jew thinks, I'm so hol holier than thou, and I'm so religious and so pious, and the other Jew is, is not religious, and the other Jew, and you look down at another Jew, what does that reveal? That reveals that that religious, pious Jew has, is clueless has zero understanding of what makes him Jewish. He confuses Judaism with religion. He thinks that what makes him Jewish is the hundred pages of Talmud that he studied, his dress, which is all external, all... The fact that... Wait, wait. Yeah. 
Okay, do you see how he speaks that Judaism is not religion, it's a nation? Every Jew is a Jew is a Jew. They the have whole, special the law whole for focus each other. Is uh, genealogical. Yeah, exactly. It's a it's a, basically a worship of a race. It's a supremacism about the, he made it all about the race, and Trump signed it. And that's the that's the sad part, Steve, that they cry anti-Semitism while they're anti-Gentilic. And let let's keep listening a little bit more to to this supremacist philosophy. No understanding. No love. No appreciation of another Jew, a fellow Jew. No understanding of the richness that we have inside of us. That we have a piece of the divine essence. And the reason the Jew does a mitzvah? 56.30, Jew comes from es essence of God, 56.30. This is the foundation of the entire Hasidic philosophy, understanding this chapter that a Jew is like a child to God. A Jew comes from the essence of God. So this is the essence of entire Hasidic philosophy, like the book of Tanya teaches that Jew is the essence of God. So did, did you hear this, Stephen? I mean, this is totally, and with this, now with this signing of this executive order that Judaism is not a religion, but it's a nation. Well, you know, we this, know where it comes from now. Here's one thing, though, you have to think about. When the Jewish people, they get upset with Christians because they say, well, you Christians say that except unless we believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, we're, we're lost. I mean, in a lot of Baptist theology, that's exactly what you would hear as well, that if you don't accept Jesus Christ, you're going straight to hell. That's, that's been more blunt there. Uh, but the, the, the point is, is they get up, uh, upset over these types of statements that are put out there. But the thing is, is they don't realize there's no difference in what they're saying, except the fact that there's, you're giving themselves supremacy. And it was actually a lot different, really, because in the supremacy they give, as being that you are Jewish by by nationality, by birth you're Jewish, that this gives you some precedence over any other person on the planet. Uh, they don't. If you'll notice, even in some of the verbiage, not just necessarily what you've played here, but we've heard it before as well. It doesn't matter if the Jewish guy is a bad guy. They, they've, you've got, we've got recordings where they have said the the bad Jew, the worst of the worst Jew, is better than a goy. Right, it's better than any goy. But there is a difference, Steve, because uh, they themselves are creating this new world order with headquarters in Jerusalem, and they are putting in laws, and they want to execute those laws. And they are talking about death penalty. Christians are not doing none of no, that. No, I agree with that. All we do is... What Christians do is preach the gospel, and then God will take care of the rest. We are not taking things into our own hands, pushing laws on nations, saying that they have to believe in Jesus, or we're going to execute them. Exactly. Okay, so there is a huge difference. They are taking things into their own hands, thinking they are supremacists, uh, supremacists, uh, supremacy race, some higher race than anybody else. Peace of God. He was just explaining here that it doesn't matter that you don't study Talmud. You are a Jew. Uh, right. You are essence of matter. God. You are God on earth because you are a Jew. Okay. So, and, and he says that's an essence of Hasidic philosophy, Chabad philosophy. Well, this tells us too, though, Yana, too, that a new world order is definitely coming. And the Jewish race is going to be in charge of running the entire globe. Exactly. Let's go to another um, video. Video. All right. Well, you I have, have actually two think. left, and you've only got a couple of well, little sections. Well, uh, right these here, uh, this particular rabbi, Aaron Raskin, I think is his name, Chabad rabbi, he will tell you at the end of his entire presentation here about Noahide code. Uh, I don't know which video is this, but okay. I think that's the one when he, will, he says, Stephen, that at the end, Rambam teaches that the entire world will come back to God through Kabbalah knowledge. 
Okay. Okay. Through Kabbalah knowledge. So this is what they're, that's why they are unleashing Kabbalah. Like Ginsburg wrote this book, Kabbalah and Meditation for the Nations. Right. The rabbis now gave okay. They approved to let this go to public. let the Kabbalah go public, and they are unleashing the Kabbalah. And Kabbalah is connected to technology. They are intimately connected. Yes. To, to to this coming 5G, 6G, and higher technology and AI technology. Right. Okay. Right. As we will actually teach on this, we are preparing teachings on this. How is it all connected? But that's what the, that's what they're all speaking about. He's going to talk about the messianic age, the last last uh, days when everybody will come to uh, knowledge of God through Kabbalah. And keep in mind too, as you guys listen to this, uh, the. Orthodox community does not believe that the Messiah can come until they enforce the Noahide laws. That's that's, the, that's another Chabad done. teaching. Exactly. Why, why do you think that Schneerson and Chabad organization put Noahide laws into the American law system? And pushing now for the United Nations. And of course, they're doing it globally. And the Vatican has agreed to it as well now. Exactly. And a lot of the Vatican's daughters, evangelical Christianity, Protestant Christianity, came under the umbrella of Vatican. And pastors are making it look like it's no big deal. Exactly. Well, it's all prepared. They're pre planning it. You see, without Noahide laws, their Messiah cannot come. And according to Chabad Hasidic theology, their Messiah will enforce Noahide laws through exactly. death penalty. Exactly. If you don't, if you don't go under Noahide laws, you die. So this is what they preach. This is what they, and Trump is working for Jews as the, you heard it. You heard it yourself through their own mouth. Exactly. So let's see what this one has to say. One good deed on the other hand, putting a nickel into the pushka, helping an old lady cross the street, bringing your mother a cup of coffee, studying some Torah or Bible. If this is if this is the correct video now, okay. Let me see. Let's go. Um, no, it should be right. Or it was this. This you had it marked uh, exactly here at the thirty-eight forty-six. Do you want to go to the other one instead? Yeah, go to the other one. Let's see what the other one says. But I think that um, I didn't have it marked right there. I think we moved it. Go ahead. That that's where he's gonna say that I th no oh, this, this one he's just basically saying that uh, Noahide laws are already in a law system and 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 they are so proud of it Steve and they speak about how Noahide laws came through uh, to the United States law education law so okay. they know it's serious yet our pastors here don't even pay attention to it right let's listen into this one. I do want to conclude by saying that on March 26th, 1990, the Noahide laws were officially recognized by both houses of Congress with the passing of Public Law 102-114 of the 102nd Congress. And there the uh, Congress clearly stated the importance of the entire American society and all humankind following these Noahide laws. So our hope and pray is that Mashiach himself will come and deliver this speech in front of the UN, in front of all the United Nations, all the nations of the world, and to inspire them to follow these seven Noahide laws and to see a world that when we will beat our swords into plowshares, and the world will only know from peace, hope, joy, and tranquility with the coming of Mashiach speedily in our days. Okay, so you, you see what we just talked about, that uh, according to their theology, it is their Moshiach that will come and enforce Noahide laws, and now he cited Isaiah, prophecy of Isaiah, for the peace where there will be no more wars. Well, you okay. know, the thing is, too, you know, that's really important is when we see so many ministers today and other commentators that are that are downplaying this, the Noahide laws that have been put by, by both houses into the uh, education uh, bill there, in the, or education law, uh, as he cites it there, 
but the Chabad organization doesn't downplay it. No, they they take it very seriously that that this law is already in United States law system. Exactly. Okay, exactly. they see it as an achievement, as a progression toward their Messiah, which will be Antichrist. Okay, Steve, so how about this previous video? I, I, I'm I, not sure what happened here. Where is that marking? Did you have it marked in your book by chance? No, I had it no. on the email. So. Okay. Okay, Steve, so let's listen to this um, man who will say that, that everybody will study uh, about God through Kabbalah. Okay cookie that one little blessing that one little mitzvah can bring salvation to the entire world so we hope and pray for a world of peace as the Rambam says that the entire world will be preoccupied will be preoccupied with the knowledge of God and the Rambam concludes his Sefer Hayad that that all the nations of the world will be preoccupied studying the deep Kabbalistic insights of who God is and what God is. And they will truly come to love God and to honor God and to fear God in a world that is... So we will all study about God and come to God and love God through Kabbalistic insights. This is their end game. This is their plan. This is why they're unleashing Kabbalah everywhere right now. This is why they're teaching Kabbalah. You know, Steve, a lot of uh, ministers who are very famous ministers are teaching so-called mysteries. They're saying that God is downloading mysteries to them. And they're teaching those mysteries to Christians. And those mysteries are taken directly from the book of Zohar. So they are teaching, yes. these are the agents that came and infiltrated into Christian churches, started movements like Hebrew Roots and Messianic movements, various movements. And they're only teaching Zohar Teaching itself. Zoharic, Kabbalistic views, okay? And th this is what is happening. And that's their Hasidic theology, as, yes. you, as you heard here right now. That you know, it was, what gets me is when they talk about that you're going to be learning this Kabbalistic uh, teachings, that's what we're supposed to do, uh, totally forgetting that the scripture actually said that the, the word of God will be written on the tables of your heart. Right. Okay, so um, now let's go to this letter I received from an uh, author, D.N. Lauper, author of the book Kabbalah, Secrets Christians Need to Know. And she sent me this little interesting um, letter today uh, from, she was talking about Alice Bailey. And she says she's considered in the occult world the mother of the New Age movement. And she was the head of Theosophy, which Kabbalah is often compared to Theosophy. And her husband, Foster Bailey, was 32nd or 33rd degree Freemason, which is also Kabbalah. We know that Freemasons are Kabbalists. Yes. We know that Trump is a Freemason. He's not Christian. He is a Freemason. And he did receive his Kabbalah tree award. Now, let's continue. When she was head of the Yasafi, she founded Lucifer Publishing Company. Then they changed the name to Lucius Trust, which operates out of the United Nations. So here is her prophecy, and here we go. Well, Dan notes in here, she's yeah, not included in her book, but this is where it is here. The three main channels through which the preparation for the New Age is going on might be regarded as the church, the Masonic fraternity, and educational field. That's the, this is what uh, Dan was talking to me about. What's interesting, they're coming through education fields. Okay, that this is a prophecy from a long right. time ago by Satanists, by Kabbalists, Alice Bailey, three main channels through which the preparation for the New Age is going on might be regarded as the church. How interesting. The church will cooperate, Masonic fraternity, which is Freemasons, and educational field. And we know that Noah Law came through education, and Trump's executive order is on educational campuses, right? Then she, uh, in her book, which is the book 
called Kabbalah Secrets Christians Need to Know on page 140. She's citing here. This is in the highlighted portion uh, at the bottom. Right. She's citing here uh, from chapter 11, page 140, from another leader of the New World Order called Jeremy Rifkin, who said evangelical churches will be the chief instrument to bring about New World Order. She, sa uh, she cites there, some Christians know that Satan is forming a world government, New World Order, which he plans to rule from modern Israel through the coming false Jewish Messiah. What most Christians don't know is that the apostate church will not only be a partner in this new world order, but is even now working toward its creation. Evangelical churches will be the chief instrument to bring the new world order to birth. Evangelical churches, and we see that who is behind Trump? And the evangelical churches. Look at Paula White and all these others sure. who are behind Trump. Right? John Hagee. John Hagee, who says that Jews don't need Jesus. Yeah, Mark a, Biltz, who says that if Jews called on the name of yod heh vav -Heh, they are saved. That, In other words, they don't need the Son of God. They don't need to believe on the Son of God because they have yod heh vav -Heh. Mm -hmm. Okay? So this is who is behind this new world order and who is actually helping it also zionistic worldview churches who are zionistic churches who are pro-israel and who almost worship race of jews and land of israel you know when you quoted this part down here at the bottom that's in yellow there this is actually a quote in Deanne's book by jeremy rifkin the emerging order uh, and on page XXX. Yeah, I would like to show uh, where people can get that book. When you go to our website. Yes, you, um, oops, sorry. When you, yeah, when you actually go to our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. And you go to our uh, channel. You yeah, click on our channel. Unfortunately, it's not under the bookstore. We thought it was not supposed yet, to be but there, but we will get that fixed as soon well, as we can. Let's tell them slowly. You go, yeah, to, go to our uh, channel. And click on our channel. You'll click, go down and click the, the one. On friends. friends. And then down here, it says, please take the time to check out Deanne Lauper's book here, Kabbalah Secrets Christians Need to Know. When you click on that, it'll take you straight, it will to, take Amazon. You straight to Amazon. Amazon. Exactly. And it's nine ninety nine. really informative book. She has refuted Kosher Pig, a Return of the Kosher Pig book by Itzhak Shapira. And we hope to have Deanne with us in a soon future and discuss she has done some excellent research on jonathan khan who is teaching zoharic prophecies to the church as anyway. his own prophecies and right. that's what a lot of people are not aware of yes. um, so that's going to be very interesting some things that deanne discovered yeah. on that as well what is interesting steve that this is not by chance these things are not happening by chance but as we've seen and heard these rabbis speak they had all the, all of these happenings today. They had all of it preplanned, carefully yes. preplanned. This is a carefully preplanned agenda. The Trump was installed to specifically serve the Jewish interests. Okay, these it's Noahide just... laws are in the law system of America now. Now they have executive order, and and Judaism is not a religion anymore in the United States. It's is. Uh, classified as a nation which we know it's a hasidic theology from the book of tanya as we heard that's exactly right and now they said that they unleashed kabbalah upon the nations and kabbalah is a jewish voodoo or a mysticism okay it's not the word of god but it's jewish mysticism connected to um connected to to very evil technology that was given uh, to humankind by the fallen angels. And we're going to talk about this in a soon future because we studied the book by uh, David Box, and we were just blown away to hear what they have in these writings and in a book called Kol Hator, The Voice of the Turtle Dove, when they describe even to the point of generation, which generation is going to the last generation before their new world order out of Israel. Okay, it's a Generation Z, and these are our children, Steve. Yes, and of course, the Kol HaTor, you're not going to be able to get this book here. It's a very ancient book there, but it is so, it is uh, sourced in the book uh, that Jana is talking about. And 
Heavily sourced. Yes, very yes. much. It's a two-volume book. Well, and we're going to do a specific yeah. te- uh, we'll, yeah, we'll show that on later. that one yes. later. But yes. anyway, I think it's so time we, to wrap it up. Yep, we've kept you for a long time. Listen, we appreciate you listening to the broadcast tonight. Uh, share it with your friends and uh, with your family members there. And, of course, our website right here, uh, if you want to help support the work that we do here, you're able to do so. Uh, you can donate right there online. You can actually just click there where it says click here. You can donate online. Also, our mailing address is right here as well if you prefer to do that by mail. Uh, and uh, and don't forget as well, Patreon, Israeli News Live on Patreon. You can support the work there. Uh, we load there from time to time. Normally just things that we don't necessarily load up here. Uh, and it'll be a blessing for you as well there and gives you another way to help support the work. And bit shoot everything Israeli News Live, you can find us. Uh, anyway, thank you for listening tonight. Blessings to you. And 